Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Varun Beverages Limited Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CTR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Varun Beverages Q3 CY 2024 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Ravi Jaipuria, chairman of the company, Mr. Varun Jaipuria, executive vice chairman and full time director, and Mr. Raj Gandhi, group CFO and whole time director of the company. We'll initiate the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. I would now request Mr. Ravi Jaipuria to make his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our earnings conference call. I hope all of you had the opportunity to go through our results presentation that provides details of our operational and financial performance. For the third quarter and nine months ended 30th September 2024, we are pleased to report another strong quarter despite the challenges posed by excessive rainfall in India. We achieved consolidated revenue growth of 24.1%, including contribution from DEVCO. Driven by our expanded distribution network, increased product penetration, and favorable demand trends in, market, in key markets. Enhanced operation efficiencies led to an improvement of 117 basic points in our EBITDA margins, resulting in a robust 30.5% growth in EBITDA and a healthy 22.3% growth in PAC for the quarter. On the operational front, we are excited to share the successful commissioning of our Greenfield facility in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, in response to strong demand and our limited presence in this region. We have swiftly ramped up the facility to 100% utilization on three-shift basis. This performance has encouraged us to move forward with expansion plans, including backward integration and a second facility expected to commence operations in the next calendar year. Furthermore, we are making significant progress on new facilities across India, which are on track to be commissioned before the key season next year. These developments reflect our commitment to capturing high growth opportunities and enhancing both our domestic and global footprint. As part of our commitment to long-term growth, the Board of Directors has approved a proposal to raise funds through the issuance of <coughs> equity shares with an aggregate amount not exceeding Rs. 7,500 crores by QRP, subject to shareholders' approval. The capital will be instrumental in supporting our growth plans, including expansion into new territories, potential strategic acquisitions and further strengthening of our balance sheet. Overall, our focus remains on sustaining healthy good growth in both Indian and international markets. The Indian market with its growing consumption class and evolving consumer preference continues to be uh, continues to offer immense opportunities. Meanwhile, our global operations, particularly in Africa, are positioned to drive further growth as we capitalize on emerging demand trends and enhance our operational capabilities. Our proven execution capabilities have been instrumental in delivering exceptional value to all share stakeholders, and we remain committed to sustained, sustaining this momentum well into the future. I would, like, uh, I would now like to invite Mr. Gandhi 
to provide the highlights of our operational and financial performance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone joining us today. Let me provide an overview of the financial performance for the third quarter and nine months ending 30th September 2024. Revenue from operations adjusted for excise GST grew by 24.1% year on year in Q3 calendar year 2024 to the level of uh, 48,046 million. Consolidated sales volume increased by 21.9% to the level of 261.5 million cases in Q3 2024, including about approximately 34 million cases from South Africa and DRC markets. The Indian uh, market grew by 5.7%, primarily impacted by heavy rains throughout the quarter, while international markets grew by 7.9%. CSG accounted for 75%, juice accounted for 4%, and packaged drinking water accounted for around 21% of the total sales volume in the quarter three of calendar year 2024. This is at a consolidated level. Non-carbonated beverages portfolio, which includes juice, fish, uh, drinks, and uh, value-added dairy beverages, uh, sports drinks, etc. Uh, in India, has grown by 23.9 percent. Uh, this thing, nine, uh, this is about non-carbonated beverages in the nine months. Grown up by 23.9 percent. Uh, our gross mar gross margins during the quarter improved marginally by 22 basis points, raising to the level of uh, rising to the level of 55.5 percent from the earlier level of 55.3 percent. This is uh, reflecting our continued focus on cost management. This, along with higher operational efficiencies, led to a 117 basis point expansion in our EBITDA margins, rising to the level of 24% from the earlier level of 22.8%. This is driving a robust 30.5% growth in EBITDA, which has gone to the level of 11,511 million during the print quarter. Depreciation increased by 50.2%, primarily due to the acquisition of Bebco and the establishment of new production facilities in India and the plant in DRC. Finance costs increased by 89.7%, reflecting the impact of the new capex on these facilities, the Bebco acquisition, and higher borrowing costs. Fat grew by 22.3% to the level of 6,288.3 million in the quarter three of calendar year 2024. This is compared to rupees 5,140.6 million in Q3 of uh, calendar year 2023. This is driven by volume growth and improved margins. The other income in India more than doubled on account of 310 million dividend received from Sri Lanka. This is the million dividend declared by that subsidiary. This is for for the first time and is non-taxable under the Income Tax Act. Uh, in conclusion, the company continues to maintain a solid financial foundation, a focus on expanding into high potential markets, enhancing our product portfolio, and investing in new production facilities, uh, positions us well to drive long-term growth in both India as well as international markets. Following the integration of Bebco, this year we are also focused on driving our presence in the South African market. Uh, with efforts already underway, we are confident that this will provide additional avenues for growth in the near future. Additionally, as covered by the Chairman, the Board's approval for a QIP of an amount not exceeding up to 7,500 crore, subject to shareholders' approval, will further support our growth plans. The funds will be raised to enable the company to repay debt and enhance profitability at that level. This will also strengthen the balance sheet and prepare the company to pursue strategic acquisitions. The net debt was around 6,000 crores. Uh, this was including CWIP on capacity for calendar year 25, season through implementation of plant at Kangra, Himachal Pradesh, Prayagraj, Uttar Pradesh, and Baksar Bihar and Meghalaya. 
Uh, on that note, I conclude my opening remarks and would now like to ask the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Aditya Soman from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Two questions from me. Uh, firstly, uh, on the India volume growth, which is uh, desolated sharply, uh, is there, uh, are there any sort of regional or brand level nuances uh, given the relatively sharp slowdown? Uh, while I understand, obviously, uh, the rains have been very uneven in the uh, in, in the quarter, and, and this quarter is not very uh, large seasonally, uh, I just want to understand if there, if there were any differences uh, between different regions, and, and secondly, just uh, in terms of uh, whether there's been a recovery uh, in October. And and the second question is on uh, competition. Now, Tata Consumer in their uh, call uh, indicated that they were impacted by the higher trade margins offered by Campa Cola. Uh, have we seen any uh, if effect of this? Let me answer you. First of all, the third quarter and second quarter normally should be looked combined together because the rains can shift one month this way or that way and sometimes the second quarter becomes heavier rain sometimes third quarter becomes heavier rain so rains affect a big portion of especially the rural part of the business and which is what has happened this year and uh, that is one of the main reasons we see we don't see any other major challenge uh, in the growth of the market so as far as uh, competition is concerned, as I have always said before, Kempa is a formidable uh, competition. They are in the market, but we are improving our go-to market, so it has not affected us at the moment. And going forward, they will take a part of the share of the, ma uh, of the total market. Who is going to get affected first? I'm not sure. Maybe it will be the smaller B brands. Uh, maybe uh, the people who are stronger in cola. I don't know. So I, it's very difficult to answer. But they are a formidable player and they will take up. But the India growth story is so large that I think there is enough room for everyone to grow. And if you look at it, you know, you're looking at 12 million outlets in India in FMCG. We only go to close to 4 million outlets. So there's so much room for everyone. That's what I can say at the moment. There's enough room for them to grow, for us to grow, for our competitors to grow. Everybody has room to grow. Thank you, Mr. Jaipuri. Um, no, I agree. I, I think on the uh, growth uh, opportunity, uh, uh, the, the question was actually more uh, with regards to uh, sort of trade margins. Uh, was there any uh, in, uh, was there any change made by trade margins by us as well in the reaction? Yeah, the results are telling you know our bid has gone up. Yes, which is yeah, which is why the question yeah. So I can't answer more than that. I understand. Right here, I'll I'll get back at you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Nuama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I have two questions. Uh, first is on the uh, QIP 7500 course. Uh, so, uh, will it be largely used for acquisitions uh, and, uh, if possible, mostly Africa? Or uh, will it be for uh, debt reduction given uh, 6000 crore debt is there? Historically, you have uh, been much more uh, focused on the expansion part of the business. So will it be half-half uh, uh, or any clarity if you can give on how you think uh, in terms of uh, use of the QIP? It will be used for both. It will be for reduction of debt as well as we are looking for acquisitions. We are always open to acquisitions. 
Uh, I'm sure we've been getting opportunities. I hope we'll keep on getting opportunities. We want to have a war chest available with us so that when the opportunity is available, we don't have to go back. Secondly, we are also looking at expanding our snack business in Africa, which which we have a huge potential. So that will help. And plus, we are expanding our capacities in India also. So it will be partly used in different different uh, areas. So my second question is on the India business. So of course, uh, this quarter almost every beverage company was impacted uh, because of the rain. My question is. Uh, would you need some inventory correction uh, if you see uh, Dabur saw very sharp uh, inventory correction because for them two back-to-back -back quarters was uh, on the higher side. Your uh, volume growth in the previous quarter Q2 was uh, 22% and now 5.7 and your base is quite high. So your base is almost 19% in December quarter. So if you could comment on how you see uh, December quarter, no, no specific guidance but given La Nina effect and given high base, and would you need some inventory correction given the kind of scenario current uh, you have? Well, we don't carry that much inventory and we can correct our inventories any time we want in 30 days. So it's not uh, something that we have to hold for six months or eight months. Sometimes when we see a favorable pricing in a raw material or a category which can be stored, then we pre-buy it and store it. Otherwise, uh, we, we can correct our inventory any time. We don't have an issue. Sure, and the last quick question on Campacola. So, in terms of INR 10 pricing, in uh, how many states would you have that in terms of uh, your key product? So we don't sell at 10 rupees. We are not selling anything at 10 rupees except glass bottles. Uh, given uh, Campacola's entry, at some stage, would you uh, need to shift to 10 rupee pricing also and from Glass to pet, how do you see the customer preference? Because pet bottle, obviously, you can carry it. Uh, obviously, much cleaner option. Glass also would have some advantage. So, could you share your thoughts? You know, glass, glass sells in restaurants and eateries. All the eateries, and they get make better margins, so they prefer to carry glass. And uh, pet sells them on the go. So, we have our uh, products, you know, which are differentiated totally from what Campa is selling, and there is enough room for everybody, as I said, you know, they can expand the market, they are putting chillers, which is good enough. Your pet will be 15, 20, right, currently? Our pet is 20. 20, understood. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, could you give us some more color on, you know, what's your, uh, uh, you know, based on the early success you've seen in DRC, uh, the, you know, roadmap ahead. I you know you've shared some details in the presentation, but want to broadly understand how big the market is and what is a, uh, you know, reasonable market share to have in a market like DRC. So that's one. And second is, you know, I think in the six months uh, so far, You've clocked about 60 million cases, uh, 58, 60 million cases in South Africa. So what is the seasonality in that market? Because the next six months will probably be peak season there. And uh, hence, you know, what should we expect from the first 12 uh, months from the operating perspective from July to June, if you were to think that way? Two things. One, I think South Africa, the first six months, <clears throat> which was we were basically correcting our back end, uh, and it was low season, it was like our winter's air. So now the peak season is starting from this uh, October onwards till March, it is peak season. And we have corrected most of our back end, so we expect a reasonable growth. I think uh, we, have, we are improving our go-to market, so I mean it's a bit early to say because October has just started, but I definitely believe we should do a reasonably decent job. And as far as uh, DRC is concerned, so we have the capacities we put are sold out. So we are expanding our capacities, and uh, which will be happening by part of it will be happening in early January, February, and the balance will be in July, August. 
So this is uh, doubling down of capacity at the current plant will happen in Gen 5 and the new plant that you are opening in the other so part. It will be, it'll be overall it will be more than doubling the capacity. Okay, and currently it is uh, nameplate capacity is 25 million cases, right? While you are operating three shifts, so you may be doing more. No, it is uh, about 35 million cases approximately. Okay. So by this time next year, your capacity for DRC will be 70 million cases or more than doubling is should what you indicated. Should be. Should be. Could be more. Sure. And just to follow up there, so in India, typically the seasonality we see is that this first half, you know, tends to be a little over 60% of annual sales. Uh, is that something should, we should expect in South Africa as well that, uh, you know, the uh, next six months should be more than 60-65% of annual volume? Uh, see, I can't give you exact details because we, this is our first year, so you need to give us a little bit time to really, because we are making the changes, we are going, uh, making the changes to enter the markets which were not entered properly. So hopefully, but the seasonality is 60-40 what you said. Right. Uh, understood. And just one question more, if I may ask. You know, lately we are seeing, you know, this jeera masala soda seems to doing, be doing quite well uh, in many markets and we see it, you know, it, uh, in some small retail outlets as well in Mumbai. What are your thoughts on, you know, the opportunity in some, you know, product like that and whether, you know, there's a case for hopefully, you to have hopefully something. Hopefully we should have something next year. We are asking Pepsi and hopefully we should have, we have Nimbu Masala Soda already which we are launching back and hopefully uh, we should have something with Jira also. But this depends on Pepsi when they are ready. Uh, so Jay, it it takes, uh, in the PepsiCo Pepsi. portfolio. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, the Jira was not allowed by PepsiCo because of the high sodium level. So they are, uh, they are you know, working on it. Understood. And uh, how big is the market today? What? Uh, for Jira. So I was under the impression that Lahori Zira uh, is very it's close doing to... doing well. A uh, lot of, uh, you know, expanding and it's doing well. So a lot of people are looking at this category and we are also seriously looking at it. And I'm sure we'll come up with something next year, early next year before the season. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devanchu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, first question is on uh, India gross margins, uh, which have dipped about 120 basis points uh, in this current quarter. Uh, so, wanted to check if this is due to uh, raw material or uh, inferior revenue mix, uh, uh, if you could just highlight. Uh, the gross margin increase you are saying. No, did Mr. Gandhi in India standalone uh, gross margin? Yeah, so that is uh, firstly at the gross uh, margin level because of the raw material that the PET prices, which uh, from the last year was lower. Uh, and uh, second is uh, the uh, operational efficiency, which uh, further has increased the margin at uh, level. Okay. And uh, are you uh, referring here? The just one second. Water. Yeah. So here there are two things. Uh, uh, they want you. One is the water uh, uh, cost, which was earlier taken as the uh, cost at uh, the uh, operating level, has uh, been uh, classified from last quarter into the cost. So that has made the difference. So that one percent has actually shifted upwards uh, yeah, from uh, that's, only a that's only that's only a shifting. Yes. Understood. Understood. And uh, uh, within uh, uh, South Africa, so that seems to be uh, doing pretty well for us. Uh, uh, so what what are the few initial steps that we've taken in the market? Uh, uh, that is number one. Secondly. Uh, is the existing distributor uh, distribution network for foods businesses uh, for PepsiCo in that geography also helping us? So uh, just wanted to check on that geography specifically. No, uh, PepsiCo's food business is completely separate than our business. We are doing our own, but we have improved our uh, go-to market, and that's what we are focusing, which we have done in India over the last few years. 
and that's what we are focusing there also. And we have corrected the back end so the cost, the lines which were not running inefficiently, we have corrected all of them, and now all our lines are running reasonably efficiently. Understand. Uh, last one bookkeeping question. Uh, uh, till June, our savings was about 1200 crore. Uh, what, what is the number as of uh, 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 September end? Uh, CWIP today is around 400 crore. All these assets have been capitalized already. Okay, Mr. Nandu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Shah from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so just on uh, the international margins, uh, basically I wanted to know they've improved actually Q1Q and uh, both YOI. I mean, uh, and if I even look at the realization per case, uh, it's gone up. Um, so my understanding was after South Africa was a slightly lower margin at 12, 13 percent when you acquired it, and even realizations were much lower than the average international realization margin. So have you have you already started seeing an uh, improvement there? So improvement will come, you know, we are already, so if the lines were running at 50% efficiencies, we have already corrected it to run proper efficiencies, which should happen in, which is in our system. So we are making sure the cost efficiencies will start coming, the advantage of bulk buying, uh, where we buy totally together as one group, those advantages will start coming. So, and the key issue is the sales have to go up, which is the go-to market. So we've already started doing it. We have seen the improvement in September itself. And we hope now the peak season is starting that we will see this quarter onwards the, the difference coming. So we are quite very uh, helpful, uh, hopeful, and we are really expecting a reasonable bump in uh, South Africa. And DRC is also, as I said, in the first four weeks we have been sold out. So that's a very... We, are, we were not expecting that actually, and it's done better than what we were expecting. God. And on DRC, I mean, um, uh, can you break up uh, what was the volume between that 34 million? I mean, how much did DRC do this quarter? 5 million. Five. We are only one month operation, one and a half month yeah. operation. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Perfect. And uh, uh, on the on the other parts of international bis uh, business, uh, with Zimbabwe and all, you know, you had that uh, transition of that sugar issue and all that is now completely behind. Uh, you are already that's back to good growth. Completely gone, but Zimbabwe. That's why it didn't show a growth this year. But uh, Zambia is doing a very healthy growth for us. I think it's growing at what? Zambia is growing close to 30 percent for us. Sri Lanka is growing for us. So I think overall international business is doing great for us. Okay, okay, good. And uh, one last question for me for the India business. I mean, uh, what would be uh, let's say yours uh, market share uh, overall uh, in the carbonated space? And let's say, I mean, in some some uh, percentage change. Let's say over five year period since you acquired Southwest and now, I mean, can you share any any, any market share change that would have happened on overall business? But I am not very sure, but I think we are doing reasonably well. Okay. But we fair to say over the last five years uh, since the first acquisition, you would have gained a uh, decent market share? We that have gained, and I think our presentation also shows that we have gained more than 3% shares. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Percy Pathanki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, congrats on good set of numbers. Uh, my question is a little bit hypothetical, but I guess now we might have to start thinking along those lines. So in a situation where, let's say, Kampai is able to make inroads and is, let's say, gaining uh, uh, a share, uh, what would be our response and what would be our priority? Would we sort of prioritize uh, 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 a sort of market share and therefore uh, try and uh, come lower in the pricing or would we prioritize our uh, uh, margins uh, given that there are other brands also at a lower uh, pricing and we would just probably treat Campa in the same bucket? Uh, so what would be the uh, top-down thought process on this? I think the first thought process would be to expand the market. As we are expanding, we are adding three to 400,000 outlets every year. 
and Kempa has just entered the market. So, for Kempa to also reach a, a large portion of the market, it will take some time. It like it has taken us. And there is enough room in the market. As I said, from 12 million, we are only reaching 4 million. I am sure there are enough outlets available for Kempa also to go where we are not reaching or Coke is not reaching. But again, you know, uh, they are playing a different play. We have a diff our products are different, our go-to market is different, our brands are different. So we have to pursue our go-to market, and if need be ever, then we'll make a range which can fight that pricing also. Sure, because see, one major difference uh, between a Coke and a Pepsi versus a Campa is that they don't have to pay any. Uh, sort of concentrate charges, which is like a form of a royalty. That's, they don't have that cost, so they save on that's that. That's not so large, my friend. That's not so large, my friend. So that cannot change the pricing. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, sir, nextly, just wanted to understand uh, the South Africa uh, ramp up. Uh, uh, I believe when we took over the Pepsi market share was a, a, a low single digit and they had some private labels and the total market share of uh, that uh, company was i think in low double digits if i'm not mistaken so uh, has there been any ramp up to those numbers i know it's very early but like in drc we saw even in the first month a very big uh, uh, sort of very material uh, uh, ramp up just wanted to understand have we seen any kind of ramp up in uh, south africa versus the situation when we took over Absolutely, we are ramping up, our uh, Pepsi share is increasing, and but it's still too early uh, stage. So last quarter we have grown at 12% already, and if you look at September, we have grown at 20%. So, okay, and this is on a YOY basis, right? Yeah. So as we are, as we are ramping up our uh, you know the system, it will take some time. But September has given us the going go forward what it is what is possible, and you know we are very happy with the 20% growth which we have seen in September. And this the season has not even started. Got it, got it. Yeah, that's all from me, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumant Kumar from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. So, uh, can you can you talk about the overall uh, the growth we have seen, six uh, percent uh, volume growth? So, how is the tier two, tier three, three cities and uh, rural doing compared to urban? Oh, you see, when there is heavy rains, rural always gets uh, disturbed first. So, this this uh, quarter has been a very on uh, presidential range, so rural has definitely got disturbed this quarter. But uh, similarly, the second quarter rural grew faster than the urban. So that's why I said these these two quarters have to be taken together and not uh, in isolation, because depending on the rain god, uh, you know, the uh, soft drink business plays uh, a bit of a role in India specifically. And uh, when you talk about the uh, margin expansion, uh, the operational efficiency we are talking about, in last couple of quarters we have seen the benefit of uh, low sugar uh, uses and also the thickness of a bottle. So how, uh, how uh, currently we have say 49% low sugar and also in bottle side we are also reducing the weight of bottle. So when uh, to, uh, we uh, till what quarter we can see this kind of improvement uh, in margin from these two activities? You'll keep on seeing improvements because all our new plants, large plants which are coming up, they are much more efficient than the older plants. Secondly, they are, we have now tried to do a complete backward integration in our bigger plants. So there is a freight savage, uh, say, we say freight on preforms, on caps, we are not transporting, we don't transport boxes. So they are minor, minor savings, but when you start adding up, it all starts uh, becoming a large number. So we are trying to do whatever is practical. And uh, so... Uh, 
Mr. Gandhi just gave me 17 plants of ours are backward integrated. Now, that is a big difference to what it used to be. So, as we keep on, like four more plants are coming up, are coming up now. So, all these new plants which are coming up, our cost of production is much lower. Our lines, the same lines which used to produce at one time 100 bottles and 200 bottles a minute, now are producing 800 and 900 bottles a minute. And it's the number of people required are the same. And uh, many, many com uh, beverage companies, we have seen uh, subdued performance uh, and some companies we have seen in beverage industry degrowth also. And we have grown 6% uh, volume growth in domestic market. So what differentiation uh, we have seen in our company and our business model? But I think the main thing is that, one, we a lot of people may not be putting enough money in the backward integration or putting expanding, cap you know, plants. So when we open a new plant, our distances come closer. We we save on freight. As I said, we don't transport preforms and caps from other plants. We save on that. And at the same time, they are larger plants, so the production capability is much higher. So we we don't do unnecessarily extra manpower shifts or you know we are not working on Sundays if we don't need to. So you, you you don't pay double wages. So these are all small, small things, but when you start adding up, they're all positive. And then, as you have said, as I've said before, we are adding close to three to 400,000 outlets every year. So we are expanding our go-to market, and which is the main game in the soft drink industry. If I could reach 8 million outlets instead of 12 million outlets, then my sale would not double, but at least would go up by 50%. So, question is how fast and how fast I can ramp up the system. And lastly, the ARPET size, uh, the industry, it is a mandatory to use 30% uh, ARPET. So, how, uh, how what is the status on uh, that? We are under full construction. We Our plant, first plant will be under production uh, by second quarter of uh, next year. And uh, we will be producing enough ARPET ourselves, what we require for the government man man mandatory. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mihal Jam from Ambit. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you so much and good evening to the management. Uh, sir, I had a couple of questions on the food business. Uh, if we look at the food arrangement that we have, say, for Zambia and Zimbabwe, where we both do the manufacturing and distribution, would the business model and the way things work be similar to how the India beverage business operates? Similarly, yes. It's a franchise like we pay concentrate, we'll pay uh, for seasoning uh, for our uh, snacks. So it will be the same thing for Morocco and uh, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Morocco would be the first plant coming up. Got that. And the second question is, uh, Pepsi's food portfolio obviously is present in much lesser number of countries versus beverages. So when we are looking at incremental opportunities as uh, part of the QIP and potential uh, food expansion, would it primarily be focused only in countries where Pepsi has a food portfolio or we could be entering countries where food, uh, Pepsi is not present with food at this point in time? No, Africa, Pepsi doesn't produce anywhere except uh, South Africa. So all the other countries are open technically, and you cannot transport air. Africa, you know, the distances are too far, so that's why they've decided to give us to manufacture, because we, it doesn't work to import and or to bring it from one plant to the other. It's too expensive. So slowly, slowly, wherever we can ramp up, we will try and ramp up. With the manufacturing and distribution, and not maybe only distribution, because of the limitation of uh, transporting uh, distribution food. Distribution doesn't work. It's too expensive. I mean, you can do a niche product. You can go to the modern trade and just sell basics, and only the rich people can have it. But that doesn't give you the market. Understood. This is right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjaya Satapati from Ampersand Capital. Please go ahead. 
Uh, hi sir, thanks a lot uh, and uh, congratulations once again for a uh, great set of result. Uh, sir, a couple of things. So one is that this fundraising that you are doing, is it uh, uh, essentially to uh, com uh, complete this transaction that is South Africa, that is to fund this transaction? Uh, and uh, uh, or the company is kind of looking at some more transactions or very lastly, like is the company looking to become a debt-free kind of a company? If I have answered this question, there we are looking at it uh, partly reduction of debt, partly uh, expansion, partly we are always open to new acquisitions if anything comes in our way. So we want to have a watch just ready. Got it. And so uh, my last question is that uh, uh, though I understand that company has done uh, great things in terms of expansion as well as uh, cost the rationalization, uh, uh, anything you know, big like Sting uh, which can be expected in the next uh, couple of years? As soon as it comes out, I'll let you know. I promise <laughs> And no, but sir, how do you how do one think about it? Because in uh, because uh, uh, it's a the, good the, the, thinking. It's a good thinking. But I promise you, as soon as I come comes out, I'll let you know. We have enough things to play with, enough things to work with, and Pepsi is always innovating new things. Understood. Understood. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Onkar Ugardare from Shri Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, congrats on the good set of results. Uh, my question is regarding could be the capex for the next uh, upcoming year. We have in the, during the last call uh, stated 2,400, which primarily for the implementation of our facilities at Kangra, Himachal Pradesh, Riyadh, Uttar Pradesh, Baksar, Bihar, and in Meghalaya. I mean, now that you have uh, considering, uh, I mean, you have approved the fundraising, uh, would that change anything? The capital uh, guidance? It's a little early. We are firstly waiting the resolution to be due by 8th November, then uh, uh, to the market. As Chairman said, that we always uh, are, uh, you know, uh, the opportunity we keep on analyzing. And uh, let's see, uh, it's a little early to predict for uh, uh, next year. Okay, and uh, you have mentioned that uh, debt reduction is one of is one of the thing which you will be doing with the QIP proceeds. So, at what debt to equity level you are comfortable with right now? I believe you are at 0.7. Uh, that's right. And uh, uh, if there is a possibility MNA, we would like to have a max uh, uh, one to zero. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, to, as the chairman mentioned, we want to create the watches so that if in case anything comes, we can uh, raise debt at that point of time instead of uh, carrying the debt when uh, we can pay it. Uh, sorry, I missed the number which you just said. No, we, uh, I stated uh, that uh, debt equity max in case uh, good opportunity comes, we can go up to one, but in the meantime, okay. proceeds of the QIP shall be used for the reduction of debt as we, so that we are able to create watches to get the opportunity whenever it comes on our way. Okay, and uh, in this presentation, you have not mentioned anything about the food and snacks business. I mean, uh, what, uh, where do we see about, uh, about, what do we see about that? I mean, we have said that three plants are going to come next year, hopefully, and that is uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and uh, Morocco. Those are the three snack plants where we have signed. We are looking at more opportunities in that in different more territories in Africa. But at the moment, only three have been agreed, and that's what the next year plans are. So the uh, plant would be commercializing the operations next uh, year, right? Next year, yes. All the three plants, right? Yes, that's what we are planning. I mean, one plant could be uh, a lap over of early uh, 26, but we are, maybe it will be next year itself. So we are not sure of the third plant. Okay, thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yes, the next question is from the line of Shirish Parveshi from Centrum Broking. 
प्लीज गो है या हाई गुड इवनिंग रवि मिस्टर एंड मिस्टर गांधी दिस टू क्वेश्चन इन द बिगिनिंग इन दिस पास कॉमेंट देर इज नो मैंशन ऑफ थिंग सो आई वॉज मोर क्यूरियस इफ यू कैन ब्रेक दिस फाइव पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट वॉल्यूम ग्रोथ कार्बोनेटेड सॉफ्ट ड्रिंक वर्सेज नॉन कार्बोनेटेड स्पेसिफिकली फॉर इंडिया एंड मे बी इफ यू कैन गिव लिटिल मोर कलर ऑफ ईच सेगमेंट हाउ द ग्रोथ इज हैपन इन क्वार टू थ्री इनफैक्ट द Incidentally, all the three segments in India, CSD, juices, and water, there is not much difference. Have grown equally. So, largely, you are saying that our growth is smaller because we are now expanding our distribution in south, and that's why the growth is normalized. That's right. Okay. So, we are just expanding the number of outlets in different areas, not only south, in north also. There's still lot lot of room everywhere, as I said. and i have repeated the numbers 12 million to 4 million is a huge scope everywhere actually the reason south and east is because the acquisition before acquisition they were very lowly penetrated by us now of course we are penetrating even in gujarat was very lowly penetrated for us so those territories which were not penetrated properly we are growing faster but other we are penet- uh, we are go- grow- uh, we are adding uh, outlets everywhere including north that's helpful uh, actually you are pushing me to ask a little bit different question this penetration led growth will last for next 4 5 6 quarter because i think in india we have enough supply it should last for next 4 5 10 years why quarter okay okay and <laughs> i mean the second question is in front of you i can only add 3 400 thousand outlets whatever i add the market grows by that many outlets so i'm still minus 8 million outlets so the reason why i'm asking because the reason why i'm asking uh, uh, for yeah. you rather than putting uh, our vehicle on street uh, the distribution line model is quite penetrated in the beverage industry if i go back uh, when we work together in the slurry so i think there is a good amount of distributorship which is happening because high throughput is happening so is it that difficult uh, why we cannot grow maybe 5x in one year so you can't because it's not easy to add so many outlets you need busy coolers you need people you need trucks it's a full gambit it's not just one thing you need capability of production everything has to be done no you okay. can't go and because to add 400000 outlets you're looking at 3 4000 people being added where do you get so many people train them Sure. Okay. Uh, my second question is on Bevco. Um, uh, we also had the non-Pepsi uh, product there. So, just wanted to understand in the new outfit, uh, how those businesses will get scale up? They are scaling up. They are scaling up the whole portfolio. Pepsi is growing faster than the other, our own portfolio, but we are scaling up the whole portfolio. Okay. And Pepsi, uh, when we have said we have grown how much in the last quarter? Huh? 12. So we have grown 12 percent, but Pepsi has grown 20 percent last quarter. Okay. Mix is 20. And this last question in India, what would be the contribution for Sting as of nine months? It's uh, it's slightly more than 15 percent. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gandhi, and thank you, Mr. Jaipuri. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vesmaya Agarwal from City. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir, thank you for taking my question. I had two questions here. So one is more strategic. When you talk about the opportunity of expanding territories and growing, and you know, you've maintained that as a key growth lever. Now, in that front, uh, you know, where do you, uh, which is a uh, bigger priority? Is it expanding new territories into beverages? like that you've done in africa or do you think that the india business itself has some white spaces in adjacent categories that you could look at and i'm mentioning adjacent because again you've always maintained that you're not getting into any category that competes with pepsico's portfolio here so you know more are separate from beverages so now just your thoughts on that please also if you look at it we are expanding as fast as we should in india i mean more than this would be really putting more capex and not getting the right return for it so we have to make sure we keep on getting a return for our investors also in what we are uh, 
expanding. And similarly, the opportunities you get outside India, Africa is the next horizon where the growth is going to come from. And going forward, next 20 years, Africa is looking very bullish. There are, there are some challenges, but that's why we don't put all our eggs in one basket. We are going into different, different countries. Each country might represent 2, 3, 5 percent of our turnover. So, which does not, so one country has an issue. It cannot affect us. Got it, sir. And if I may follow up on that, so uh, what I understand is India, you're happy with the um, the portfolio here. While, yes, you did mention earlier on the call that Jira is, say, a subcategory that you could look for, but nothing beyond beverages at the moment in India, right? So it's predominantly Africa. I'm not where, saying anything. I'm saying we are right now we are doing everything which is right, and when the opportunity comes, we might look at any, something else. But right now, it's uh, that's where our focus is, and... We will not do any beverage which competes with the PepsiCo. Got it, sir. So, very helpful. And so, secondly, on profitability in India now, you know, the past nine months, uh, margins have been well ahead of you know, something that uh, you've done historically well ahead of the guidance that you've maintained uh, always. So, just the question there, like, uh, is it a time where you probably look at revising the guidance upwards, or do you see some risk in uh, on the RM we side? Like we see this quarter. We have never given guidance upward of that. 21-22% in soft drink industry is the best you can get. We are trying, we are always trying to improve on ourselves and we'll keep on doing that, but that would not be our guidance. Got it. But sir, do you see any risk on the RM side? Because we just saw this quarter, the cross margins dip a bit in the India business. So is there... Oh, minor. I mean, we have not seen many major. I mean, I can't look at the world, what is where it's going. Suddenly the oil prices go up. I can't answer that, to be honest. That, you know, that is something totally not in our hands. Or you get a fun, complete drought year where the sugar prices go up. So, but, you know, that is also getting covered now as our portfolio is getting uh, reduced from sugar. 49% of our portfolio is low sugar. Or So I think we are covering ourselves from every side. Minor changes can happen. This is uh, So that's why I don't give you a guideline of more than 21, 22. Right, Thank you, and that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, you know, the three snacks plants that you're setting up in uh, Africa, uh, what will be the you know, turnover uh, at full capacity that you expect to do from these three units? Okay. About $100 million. This is the potential, uh, Jay, going forward. Potential. We have, uh, you know, uh, in our presentation, which was put up when this was last agreed, uh, country-wise, the industry size in U.S. dollars, and we have also given uh, data the investment. And uh, it has, in a uh, couple of years, once these plants are operational, uh, the potential of about 100 million USD, where uh, the revenue from these three plants can go up. Sure, that's helpful. Second is, can you give us some indicative sense of, you know, how would margins in snacks business at, you know, at optimal scale compare versus beverages? And what about return ratios? Because I assume that asset terms will be much higher in that business. So how would return on so capital you think, like, look? You, that's the only reason Pepsi doesn't give it to other people. This is less capex, more turnover. So ROCs will be better, even though margins could be a little lower. You can say what you want. That's what I said. Yes, they are much better. Sure. All right. Thank you so much and good luck for the coming quarter. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we would take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope uh, we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our investor relations team. Thank you once again for your interest and support and for taking the time out to join us on this call. Look forward to interacting with you soon. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Varun Beverages Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.